so what is Justin Amash's winning coalition look like? Is there one? Is it going to, I have a follow-up question, but, but let's just, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so Justin Amash, um, cont- oh, there it is, Amash 2020. Justin Amash contends that, um, it, you know, like like I'm saying, it, it, essentially there's uh, a lot of people who are underrepresented. Um, there's a lot of people who have issues with the system, and he wants to reach all those people. He wants to build that coalition. Um, this will necessarily involve, you know, bringing people on who aren't really libertarian. Like, I think a lot of people are missing this. Like, the goal is not a mass conversion that rarely works like you like you're saying you know you need to build coalitions um i think that two major things that i think i I always thought people should focus on and he is focusing on i think which is great is um there's two things that government does a lot that hurt a lot of people and could be you know reined into a degree um one of them is cronyism government takes your resources and they give it to the politically influential so big businesses, unions, you know, institutions, stuff like that. You saw this in the recent um, bailout that they did. You know, everybody got these stimulus checks and they made this big deal about it. But most of the money did not go to individuals. Most of the money went to connected um, businesses and organizations. Um, And we saw a lot of cases where a lot of these uh, businesses were wasting the money right after they got it or even before they got it. You know, so the the airlines were running, you know, empty flights, burning the cash to make the bailout cash. You know, like it, it's right. it's just absolutely ludicrous, and that's what our system is based on. It's a system of of legal plunder. Um, so I think a lot of people are fed up with that plunder. Um, another thing um, that people are really affected by right now is red tape. Um, you can see actually recently with the whole situation with the the COVID nineteen crisis. I really think um, we could have done a lot better handling this if it weren't for all this red tape. Uh, Early on, the the CDC effectively stopped um, people from uh, entering the market with with private tests. They were like, oh, it's okay, we got it, you know, it's gonna be good. And then they screwed it up. Um, And then we lost all this valuable time that people could have been, you know, perfecting this process if we decentralized it a little bit more. Um, And I think that's another thing that he's going to that he's highlighting that's actually hurting a lot of people is a centralization of decision making where they're saying like, hey, we need to handle this. We're going to handle the whole thing. And then just the 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 entire, you know, the nature of these of these bureaucracies is that they mostly exist to protect um, themselves. I mean, do 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 you watch a lot of Netflix uh, yeah, I do. Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. So recently on Netflix, they've had this kick um, documentaries and shows about um, government incompetency. Basically, um, that's my interpretation of it. Maybe that's the the libertarian. You know, they, they might have said it's something else. But you look at these cases um, with uh, Gabriel Hernandez in Los Angeles. You know, the kid who was um, you know murdered by his you know parents, and they, the 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 stuff about the opioid the opioid crisis and the stuff about Waco and all this like these are cases where um, the where the government really uh, screwed up and they they highlighted uh, another big one I guess uh, what was it? that was on Netflix it was the um, how to fix a drug scandal definitely watch that if you haven't uh, watched that but it was um, it was a, a big you know overarching narrative where you saw over time that this bureaucracy um, in, in the state of Massachusetts was functioning exactly how it was meant to. Um, it was basically trying to protect itself at all costs. You had uh, overwhelming evidence that there was something broken in their system. People were, um, there was there was two simultaneous cases of uh, unreliable test results at the state uh, drug labs. And the uh, attorney general of the state um, actively, you know, prevented that investigation going anywhere for ages and it, it took the very hard you know thankless at the time work of uh some defense attorneys and some other people like journalists and stuff like that to kind of you know force the government to you know behave the way it it should but um i think this is what happens naturally when any organization gets this large um so we need we need checks on that kind of power um, because we can't have all the decision making you know centralized uh in these people's hands now you mentioned that we, you know, we have to reach out to a broad coalition, which I, I agree with. Now the the other side of that argument, you have some people like Jacob Hornberger, 
um, Michael Malice, Dave Smith, Tom Woods, who have been saying, you know, conservatism is just progressivism driving the speed limit. If you don't swing for the fences, if you don't show, if you don't have a clear choice, why should people vote for you? Why shouldn't people just vote for one of the two major parties? Uh, what, what do you think of, of that approach? Um, you know, I, I think that uh, different people are motivated by different things. I, I think that you have to acknowledge the fact that um, anybody who, you know, joins your cause isn't necessarily um, going to be, you know, in it for the same reasons that you are. Um, you look at all the the influential social movements in American history, there were people involved uh, with very different motivations. Um, you know, a lot of people like to talk about the Baptists and the bootleggers. <laughs> Both of these groups, um, you know, wanted, um, you know, wanted prohibition for their, you know, various uh, right. differing reasons. But um, the same thing is kind of true, I think, of, of political movements. You have some people who are I ideologues, maybe. They have like this idea, this is the ideal version of government. This is the ideal version of society or whatever. And they're going to try to convert people and evangelize and bring people their cause. Um, but I think that if you want to actually move the needle in your direction, you're going to have to um, get people involved who don't necessarily, you know, agree with what you agree. On. And it's not even that you really have to compromise on your principles. You just have to think about, OK, what am I trying to do? What goal am I trying to achieve? And then focus on the things that are going to bring you, you know, do something that you know affects change in a positive direction uh in a way that you can get other people on board 